Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Virtual Elephant YouTube channel. In this video today, I'm going to walk through how to deploy a Kubernetes cluster leveraging AWS's Elastic Kubernetes Service, or EKS. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a cluster deployment using both the AWS CLI as well as the AWS UI Web Console. So let's get started. Before we get started with the deployments, let's first spend a moment talking about what AWS's Elastic Kubernetes Service, or EKS, really is. So EKS is a managed Kubernetes service that takes care of the control plane operations, including upgrades, scaling, and security patching. With EKS, AWS handles the Kubernetes API server and etcd, so that you can focus on managing workloads rather than the underlying infrastructure. For beginners, EKS is a fantastic starting point because it abstracts a lot of the operational complexity of Kubernetes. And if you've seen my other videos on how to manually deploy Kubernetes, you can see that there are a lot of steps included in order to have a running Kubernetes service or cluster. And EKS takes care of most of the hard work for you. And so if you're working towards a Kubernetes certification like the certified Kubernetes Administrator test or exam, this is a great way for you to be able to get started quickly to get your hands dirty to learn more about Kubernetes and how to deploy workloads and run applications. Now, before we get started, one of the things that I did was set up an entirely new AWS account. Now, you certainly don't have to do that. So if you have an existing account already, you can just go ahead and leverage it. But since this was going to be a fresh account and I wanted to be able to show everyone here in the video how to do this from scratch, one of the things that I did was walk through all of the steps necessary to create an EKS cluster as well as the VPC, the networks that you're going to need to support uh, for it, all of the routes and everything. And so this, uh, these steps were actually performed here uh, through the AWS CLI. And then later on, when I did the deployment through the web console, I leveraged many of the same constructs um, within that environment to deploy that EKS cluster. Now you can do this however you like. Again, I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch so that if you're just starting out, you can follow these steps. And I'll include the steps in the description of the video below. So be sure you check them out. Now, just for clarity's sake, um, it's been a while since I've leveraged uh, AWS for Kubernetes, it's been several years. And so I didn't remember all of the commands or all of the syntax necessary to do this because I've been out of practice, been doing so many other things like leveraging Rancher and Red Hat OpenShift. And be sure that you check out those videos in the channel as well if you're trying to get uh, better at Kubernetes and all of the different platforms that are out there. So the first thing that I did was I actually went into ChatGPT and said, listen, I've got a fresh AWS account and I want to be able to deploy an EKS cluster using the CLI. Please walk me through the steps. And so that's where most of these commands came from. One of the challenges that I did have was with the IAM role. So make sure that you've got your IAM set up correctly for whatever user you're going to be deploying these clusters through. Um, but other than that, you can actually just copy and paste these from the description and you should be able to set up an environment within uh, your own AWS account. There are going to be certain things throughout this video that you see me actually highlight and uh, I'm actually highlighting them and then copying and pasting those into a notepad as I was going through it. So things like uh, certain UIDs and everything for some of the objects is that it was creating for me that I was going to need to leverage later on. So let's just jump right into it. So you can see here that I have a putty window. Again, this is just a Linux virtual machine that I'm running and I have the AWS CLI um, running within it. And so I go through here and the first thing that we have to do is actually create the VPC. So you can see that I'm issuing that command to create the VPC. And then once that's done, I'm actually going to highlight off the VPC ID and make sure that I save that in my notepad file so that I can reference it later in the rest of these commands. Now, once we have that 
uh, VPC created, the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually create several subnets. So we're going to go through here. We're actually going to create four. We're going to create two that we're going to use for external and two for internal networks. Again, we're going to make sure that we copy off um, the subnet IDs into our notepad file. So you can just see here that I'm iterating on the CIDR block that it's leveraging 10010 slash 24 10 0 2 0 slash 24 and you can choose whatever you want here so if you already have an aws account make sure that whatever network blocks you're choosing here are going to be appropriate for your existing environment once i've created the four subnets that we're going to be leveraging the next thing to do is actually create the internet gateway and then attach that internet gateway to our vpc from there we're going to create and allocate an address and then we're going to create a nat gateway as well and once we've done that, the next thing that we're going to do is actually create a routing table uh, for the VPC to be leveraging with a destination um, for the internet as well as associating that routing table with one of the subnets. So we're going to actually do this twice to for the, um, these were the two external uh, subnets that we created a few moments ago. And then we're going to do the same thing for the two internal subnets. We're going to create those routes, and then we're going to associate those internal networks with that route table. Now, once we've done all of that, we essentially have all of the networks that we're going to need, as well as creating all of the route tables inside of the VPC that we're going to be deploying the EKS cluster to. Now we're ready to actually run the AWS EKS create cluster command. You can see here that I've specified several options. I've given it a name. I've told it the region. I've also specified a Kubernetes version that we want to be deploying. So this is 1.31, um, as well as some of those resources, the VPC config, the network config, um, as well as some logging options and some tagging. So a, a, a name value that we've done here. So the name of it is EKS cluster two. And then I've also specified dash dash debug. Again, I really like doing this, especially when you're first starting out and learning a new technology. Wherever possible, be as verbose as you can be with the output so that if you do encounter a problem, hopefully you will be able to catch it early on to understand what is going on. Now, one thing to note here, this create cluster command is only going to create the actual control plane for the Kubernetes cluster. It's not going to actually create any of the worker nodes. We're going to do that in a few moments once the cluster has been created. And so once we go ahead and we hit enter here, we're gonna see AWS provide some debug information for us and then an output, a, a JSON output for us that we can see that it came back and said, okay, here's everything that I've done for my create clusters. And then we can run this AWS uh, EKS list clusters, and we can see now that our cluster is listed. Now it's not online yet, it's actually deploying. And so we're going to switch screens here to actually the web UI, and you're going to see this cluster appear um, within the UI here, and we're going to click on it, and then we can see the status is creating. Now, while this is running on the screen, we're actually going to switch over, and I'm going to show you how I then used uh, the web UI to actually create um, the uh, Kubernetes cluster using the GUI. We're going to do this side by side. So here on the screen now on the left side with the right side is that cluster that we created using the CLI. On the left side of the screen here, you actually see the web UI where we're going to create a new cluster using the web console. So you can see that we've given it a name. Again, I gave it a Kubernetes version. Okay, we're gonna make sure that we select an IAM role. Again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have that as well as a node role and then that VPC that we created and two of the subnets that we created earlier using the CLI. We're actually going to leverage them here through the UI so we don't have to recreate them, but you certainly could. You can see off to the right hand side of the web console that if you don't have these objects created already, you can actually create them using the web console. So once we do that, we're just going to go ahead and click create. And now we're going to see this cluster is being created um, through the web UI. Again, now you can see side by side that they are both in this creating um, status as it's going through and creating the control plane nodes for us. Now, 
to note here, one of the things when you're a content creator was OBS didn't record me actually creating the node group, so the worker nodes, um, through the UI interface. Um, but I did manage to get a good video for how to create that worker group um, within the AWS CLI. So we're going to switch over to how to do that. You can easily do this through the web UI if you need to. But really what we want to do is to actually now create the worker nodes that we want to be able to deploy applications to within EKS. So we switch back over to our PuTTY window and we're going to simply execute a command AWS EKS create dash node group. We're going to give it the cluster name, the node group name, and then we're going to give it a minimum size, a maximum size, the desired size of two. We're going to tell it what subnets to use. And then again, we're going to give it an instance type. So here T3 medium, and then we're going to tell it a node role that it's going to leverage. So this is that I am role group node group role that I created earlier. And so we're going to go ahead and just simply hit enter. Again, I did dash dash debug to get a little bit more information in case there was a problem. So you can see it's going to go ahead and tell me what is created. And we can switch over to the um, UI to be able to see what it looks like from the UI perspective in the web console. So now we can click on compute and then select that node group that we've created. And we can see up here on the right side of the screen now status creating. And it's going to go ahead and simply create those nodes that we need to act as worker nodes within our Kubernetes cluster. Now, once this is done, you have a working EKS cluster that you can begin to leverage either for actual applications that you want to deploy out into AWS or if you're just studying for a certification or learning more about Kubernetes, you can now have an EKS cluster that's ready for you to start going through your exercises within your environments to be able to learn more and prepare yourself for the CKA test and exam. So once the cluster has been created, you can see here that I actually chose a version of Kubernetes 1.31 that was actually behind um, what was actually available to deploy through EKS. And I did that purposely uh, when I deployed both the cluster through the UI as well as the cluster through the uh, AWS CLI. And the reason I did that was I wanted to be able to demonstrate just how easy it is to upgrade the cluster to a newer version. So you can see here the banner across the top of our web UI uh, cluster that we created that it says a new Kubernetes version is available for the cluster. So we're going to go ahead and click on upgrade version. It's going to say, give us an opportunity to select the new version. We're going to do 1.32. And then we're going to go ahead and just click upgrade. And now it's going to actually do it in the background for us, similar to how it was creating. So you can now see here on the UI screen that the status says updating because it is upgrading that cluster for us to 1.32 from 1.31. And if we switch over to the CLI, so here we have a AWS CLI command, AWS EKS update cluster version, the name of the cluster, and then the Kubernetes version that we want to go to. We're going to go ahead and hit enter here. It's going to give us some information back, acknowledging that it did the, the, uh, the task for us. You can see there it says status in progress. And so now we can switch over to the a web console for this EKS cluster 2 that we created using the CLI. And you can see now the status says updating. So again, very easy to be able to upgrade the nodes um, within the environment from one version of Kubernetes to the next. And it's going to go ahead and take care of this for you. So that's it for today. We deployed a Kubernetes cluster on AWS EKS using both the console UI and the AWS CLI. And if this helped you, please make sure that you hit that like button as well as subscribing to the channel and let me know what you're looking for from a Kubernetes content perspective. As you've seen already in 2025, Kubernetes is a massive focus for the Virtual Elephant channel. And I look forward to sharing with you more videos in the coming weeks on how to leverage Kubernetes in a myriad of environments and a myriad of deployment models. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and leave me a comment below if you have any questions. And of course, if you're studying for one of the Kubernetes certifications, please let me know what topics you'd like to cover next. 
Make sure that you're reaching out to me on X at Chris Mutchler and find me on LinkedIn. And until next time, thank you.